kill one, kill one! What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Previously I showed you guys what I bring to the airsoft field and all the gear that I use for that. Today I'm going to show you what I bring to the paintball fields. Uh, but without further ado, let's get down onto the table and I'll show you what's in my gear bag. It's been three days since I recorded that intro. So I uh recorded it in my living room and uh ceiling fans are a lot louder than you think they are when you're recording on when you're recording video of them um so yeah that footage sucked so i'm back in my 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 bedroom now no fans hopefully it sounds better this time but hey, let's actually record this correctly this time, and let's get on with what I bring to the paintball field. First things up, showed you guys these in my airsoft video, but these are HK Army elbow pads. These guys have been working great for me. I have no problems with these guys slipping up and down my arms or anything like that, and they're fairly comfortable. No problems with these guys at all. Up next is my JT Pod Pack. This is the Dynasty version, so you have all the Dynasty logos and stuff like that on it. Um, it's nothing special whatsoever. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. The Velcro is pretty solid on these guys here, so no problems with these guys run or falling out or undoing themselves in accident. There's also a 4 plus 7 Pod Pack, so you can carry 4 on the main slots, and you have 7 extra little elastics to carry more pods. So you can carry a lot of paint with this guy. Um, speaking of pods, I always carry extras. Um, I only have five extra, uh, four on the pack and then five spare. I definitely need to get more of these guys, especially when tournaments start rolling around. But yes, always carry more pods. This is a Freak XL barrel insert kit. This guy holds all of my inserts for my infamous barrel on one of my markers. Has all the inserts I'll ever need for it right in there. Definitely recommend getting a barrel kit that runs inserts. The Freak XLs are super nice. I've had no issues with these guys at all. Uh, if you're running decent, good, decent quality to good quality paint, Freak barrels work really, really good. Up next is my hopper. This is a Virtue Spire IR2, just in black. I have the speed feed on here and also the spring ramp on the inside to help load balls a little more efficiently. Um, these are a really good deal. I think you can get this entire package for usually around 180 bucks just in the black color. I've never seen them sell with the other colors with the speed feeds and stuff, but if you're okay with black, the Spire R2 is a really good option for anyone that's getting into it or just needs a hopper that's not crazy expensive. Up next is one of my tanks. Uh, this is actually currently the only one I can use out of the two that I own. This is a Ninja SLP 40, no, 50 cubic inch, 4500 PSI uh, carbon fiber tank with an HK Army grip, tank grip on the back. Um, I like having this tank because it's nice and small and it shoots plenty enough for me. I usually go through about six or seven pods on one tank fill on this little guy, which is super nice. I also have a older SLP tank. It's a 68 cubic inch uh, Ninja tank, but that regulator is really, really old and it's outputting way more pressure than I can run through either marker that I own, so I don't use it. Um, but this guy is working very well for me. Never run out of air on the field still, even though how small it is. And up next is a barrel squeegee. These, this is a pretty self-explanatory thing. If your gun breaks paint or your barrel gets really dirty or just run your squeegee through it, and 
you're done. Your barrel's clean, yay. And they fold up nice so you can fit them inside the, pan, the little slit on most paintball or if not all paintball pants. Um, definitely want to grab one of these so you don't have to keep asking for one or don't want to shoot with a barrel with a bunch of paint in it. So barrel swap, highly recommend. Inside here is another barrel kit that I own. This is a parabolic barrel kit. Um, they come in, you get four barrels with these kits. So unlike having one barrel with a bunch of inserts, you actually get four different barrels of varying bore size. I really, really like these barrels. This is probably the most accurate shooting barrel that I have. Um, but it is, it's, it's an expensive kit, you know, which should be obvious because you're getting four barrels with it. And they're all one piece barrels too. So theoretically, these should be more accurate than a two piece barrel. I can't stress this one enough, but if you're a paintballer, buy Allen keys. They're good to have. There's no reason not to have these. This is like a $10 kit on Amazon. And it's also nice to have the ones with the little ball tips so you can get into weird angles on some areas like taking off ASAs or getting into certain areas to get screws out. Um, yeah, carry Allen wrenches with you because if your marker goes down and let's say you don't carry a toolkit with you, you're kind of screwed. Next up, these are HK Army knee pads. Um, not a huge fan of these. They're comfy, but the problem is, is that I've tried multiple sizes of these. These guys will just slide up and down your legs. You take one dive or one slide, these guys are at your ankles. So they're good protection. They're very, very, there's a, there's a lot of cushion on the front here, but if you're a person that likes to dive or likes to slide a lot, don't get these. Get, there's, there's, Definitely a lot better options out there. Just stay away from these. Up next, let's go over markers that I have that I carry in the Field One case, which carries two markers fairly comfortably and also has a whole front pocket here, which I carry an entire O ring kit for one of my markers. Um, o rings, if you can get, if your gun comes with O rings or you can get O ring kits for your guns, highly recommend it because seals blow all the time, you know. Um, you never know when it's gonna happen. So if you can get orange for your gun, you can get giant kits of them, get them. First marker is the my Bob Long VCOM. This guy is actually an old Dynasty used marker. This one was owned by Marcelo Margot. Um, I had a buddy that had this for sale and I, after shooting it, I really couldn't say no. Um, Bob Long markers are fantastic. There are definitely a couple that I don't like, but the, the ones that I do own and have shot, I really, really enjoy. The VCOM is very, very smooth shooting. Um, not a lot of recoil. Um, just It just it works really, really well. I have an HK Army Vice Grip on the front here and also Field One Purple Grips just to add a little more purple stuff to the gun because um, I like purple. Really pretty anno on these guys. I like the blue and the black. I've been really getting accustomed to blue stuff lately. Um, I say that and then you're gonna see my next marker. But I like blue and I like purple and I like black. So no complaints with this one. Up next is my Bob Long G6R. This guy is a 2011 model. So unlike newer guns or most modern markers, there is no LCD screen or anything on the back of these guys. To program it, um, it's all programmed through this little light on the side here. You usually find this in more budget markers nowadays, but back in the day, this is kind of standard. So I have no problems with it. It was programmed perfectly from when I got it, so I haven't even thought of touching it and I probably don't ever plan to. Um, also same thing, I got an HK Army Vice Grip on here. I got white to match the kind of silverish white look. And then I kept keeping the Bob Long Grip on here just because of this little flashing light here. I could always cut a hole in a field one grip, but that sounds like work that I don't feel like doing. This gun is super snappy. I'm a, this is my new all time favorite marker that I've owned. Um, I've only owned four, so I don't know why that's even, a, it's not even a big list, but still, uh, you have this really tiny bolt up here. It's super small, it's super fast. It's just, it's just, it's just a blast to shoot. It just puts a smile on your face. All right, let's move on to some swag, why don't we? The first thing, let's talk about some jerseys. The first one I have is a 
Dynasty jersey. This is the Marcelo Margot jersey that, you, uh, that Hormesis dropped. I think there was only 60 of these ones made. I got number 15. I just got it because I like the, the Korean stuff on it. Even though I'm not a Korean, but it's Asian and I'm Asian, so that works. Um, one thing I learned is JT jerseys are huge. This is an XL, which is my normal shirt size, and this is basically a dress. Next up, we have another Dynasty jersey. This is the Alex Fragi jersey. This one's probably my new favorite just because I really like the teal and it matches the pants leg. It kind of matches the pants that I just bought. Um, this one's a large and fits much better. Learned from the last one. This is the first jersey that I ever bought. This is a Hormesis owner's group, not a for official Hormesis product by any means, but it's a Hormesis owner's group jersey. Um, it's purple, that's why I bought it, and I like Hormesis, so I said, that's perfect for me. On to headbands and head wraps, I have a few here, all Hormesis. Um, this is a Hormesis canvas count, as you can see, a lot of use of this guy. This guy is faded as shit. Uh, I've been using this guy ever since I started my Hormesis collection, and I really enjoy it. Obviously, it's purple. I mean, personally, I like it. Uh, two newer ones that I got. This is the Rambo band. This is kind of like a, it's got tan, it's got blue, it's got green. Nice little map mix up there. This is the Aquarius band. Purple and white. With white or purple with white cruxes, cruxes I should say. Um, I really like the crux bands, as you can tell. I like the design a lot. It's just simple and it looks nice. For head wraps, this is the tieback scintilla that they released recently. I like these ones a little more because instead of having the Velcro to tie on your head or to wrap around your head, you actually have a full length strap. So a little more solid. There's no chance of any Velcro wearing out, which is nice. Um, and you can kind of run this solo. I know a lot of people run head wraps with a band around it, but with this one, you can kind of just run it as is, and it looks totally fine. But it works, it does its purpose, it keeps the sun off of my neck, off the top of my head. Um, super comfy, no problems here. And I just got these in the mail today, so it actually kind of worked out that I messed up the first attempt of this video. These are just JT joggers in teal. Very comfy, a little on the heavy side, but in Colorado this is going to be pretty nice when it starts to get cold outside. Um, but yeah, these are comfy and they're cheap. They're only like 50 bucks. So if you're looking for a pair of affordable joggers that feel pretty nice, nice and stretchy too, then look at JT joggers. They come in a plethora of colors. I'm pretty sure last but not least, we actually have my main Proflex that I use. Um, I have a, I have two now. I've slimmed down the collection a little bit, but this is what I got right now. It's got dyed purple. Tropic Thunder lowers, a custom dyed uh, frame to match the count headband that I have, uh, purple ears, Hormesis strap, and also this yellow, blue, greenish lens that works great in the sunlight. Um, I use this one more than anything because it's, it's also the only one I have that has a chin strap at the moment. And when you play tournaments, chin straps are usually required. Um, so this is usually my go-to ProFlex. My other one kind of just sits on the shelf. It doesn't get used a whole lot still. But there's that. All right, guys, that about does it for my uh, my gear bag and what I bring to the paintball field. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe. And like always, hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ugh.